Good afternoon. This is Jared Horak for the RunawayHorse.com. We're re recapping Kentucky Derby uh, 2015. Uh, let's get right to it. And an American Pharaoh uh, was your winner, and congratulations to him. We actually we did like him. He was one of our contenders in our analysis. And if you bought our Kentucky Derby analysis, uh, we did give out the the six dollar exact uh, with firing line and the and the trifecta with Dortmund as well. So we ended up making a profit if you wagered on our wagering strategies. You would have ended up making a profit that day. An uh, American Pharaoh, a, a deserving winner. He was one of the, the better horses coming in. He was the favorite in the race. Uh, Pioneer of the Nile was his sire. And on the breeding angle, we said that Pioneer of the Nile was my derby horse when he ran and he finished second. A Pioneer of the Nile sire, Empire Maker, also finished second in the derby. And then Empire Maker sire, Unbridled, won the derby. So this is a strong derby a, a, a derby sire line and, and has now gotten uh, stronger with, with um, American Pharaoh uh, getting the job done in this race. Uh, so he had a good trip on the outside, uh, breaking from an outer post, and, and he was able uh, to wear down uh, the front runners. Now the pace was moderate in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, you had Dortmund setting the pace, uh, firing line was chasing, and then American Pharaoh was right there as well. And those top three basically ran one, two, three all the way around. So when you have some of the best horses in the race, uh, up there on moderate fractions, uh, they're not going to stop running, and that's exactly what happened. They were able to keep going, uh, and it looked like maybe in a minute in the stretch that that firing line was going to win. Uh, but American Pharaoh wore him down. He got the job done by a length. Uh, firing line ended up finishing a good second. He broke from an advantageous post position. He was always in the hunt under Gary Stevens. He was fresh, ready to run a big race. He's uh, he always runs a big race, and that was and the Derby was no exception. I think more than anything else, it was just a question of did he want to run this far. Uh, and he proved that he was able to get the distance. And then Dortmund, a good solid effort finishing third. That was his first career loss. Uh, some others worth noting, uh, Frosted was actually my, my top choice, uh, the win choice in this race. Uh, and he ended up finishing an okay fourth. He had to rally from, from 15th place. There wasn't any pace. He was wide. He was trying to finish, and he just missed third by a neck. I think he actually ran a winning race, and if the pace was a little bit quicker, he probably could have given the, the top three a real run, especially the top two. Uh, but it didn't work out for him, and he's going to skip the Preakness. He's going to wait for the Belmont Stakes for trainer Kieran McLaughlin, and he's definitely one to watch in the third leg of the Triple Crown. Uh, Danzig Moon finished a decent fifth. Uh, if you played the super high five, uh, he did end up uh, finishing fifth in that race. And, and if you watched, if you listened to the Fast Track radio show on, on Saturday on Derby Day, I said a, a horse that was live for your exotics, your tri supers, super high fives, was Danzig Moon. Uh, and at 22 to 1, he was able to finish fifth. Uh, a good solid effort on his part. A materiality uh, for Todd Pletcher, one we didn't like just because he just didn't have the experience to win this race, only coming off three starts. Nothing against his ability. He just didn't have the seasoning. He broke slow. He looked like a horse that, that kind of uh, was behind the others from a seasoning standpoint, and, but he was hardly disgraced. He finished nicely, Finished. Uh, ended up finishing sixth, and they'll, they, um, they'll probably not go to the Preakness. Todd Pletcher is not known for bringing horses back in two weeks. Uh, but my, my best guess is that he would wait for the Belmont Stakes, and he would be another one that would be a big threat in that race. Uh, Move Tahij, the horse from Dubai, he wasn't disgraced either. Finishing eighth in an 18-horse field, worked his way up to sixth in the stretch. It was just, it was too much for him. He has a lot of ability, obviously, but coming from Dubai, that ship, and then having to come here uh, and running the Derby against all the horses that have uh, prepped in the U.S., it was just a bit too much for him, but again, not disgraced at all, uh, finishing eighth in that race. Now, Carpe Diem, uh, he was my number one Derby contender on my Derby blog. If you ever followed my Derby blogs from last September, Carpe Diem was my number one contender. It was not my top choice in the race. Didn't like his post position. I just thought he was going to be a little bit more uncomfortable with some of the better speed horses drawing to the outside. And maybe that was that was the, the thing for him. He was up tracking the pace, and he ended up uh, just uh, slowly fading to finish 10th. He's one that has a lot of ability. He's going to win more stakes races this year. He loves Keeneland, the Breeders' Cups of Keeneland this year. He's a two-time graded winner there. He's trained there. And I would think that later this year, I'll look for him to win some races. And, and if it's a, an early Breeders' Cup Classic, if I had a horse to throw in uh, just as a future wager for the Breeders' Cup Classic, Carpe Diem, you could do worse because he certainly loves that Keeneland main track. And then the, probably the biggest disappointment of the race was Upstart. Uh, he's one that had done well in Florida. Uh, he, he's all, he was so consistent. He just didn't run at all. He ended up finishing last. He's much better than that, and maybe he'll run better later this year. Uh, if you did purchase our analysis, I said we had the trifecta, uh, we had and had the exacta as well, and we're going to be selling Preakness, exa Preakness analysis as well. If you go over to the runawayhorse.com, check our What You Missed page.
you'll see all of our analysis, our, our Kentucky Derby full card. Uh, we'll have uh, our Derby only product that we had, uh, and also our Santa Anita full card, which we had a, a good day on Saturday, and even a better day on Sunday. If you purchased that Santa Anita full card, we had the early pick four and the pick five on, on that full card. So we sell full cards from Santa Anita for $10 every weekend, and then also we mix in those full cards from, from um, the Triple Crown Series and the Breeders' Cup as well. So go over to therunawayhorse.com for more details on, on purchasing uh, that analysis. Uh, for the Preakness Stakes, uh, some of the new shooters, a Divining Rod is probably going to run there uh, for trainer Arnold Delacour. But he has the same, um, the same owners as Barbaro. Uh, so he's one that, that's shown a lot of ability. He was second in the Sam Davis Stakes at Tampa Bay earlier this year, third in the Tampa Bay Derby behind Carpe Diem, and then he won the Lexington Stakes, a grade three at Keeneland last time, uh, beating some, some decent competition. So he's one uh, for the new shooters. Uh, the new shooters typically, uh, they don't always do well, uh, but in the past, uh, horses like Bernardini, uh, Aloma's Ruler years ago, uh, we've had some new shooters uh, win this race in the past. A Red Bullet beat Fusaichi Pegasus, uh, so that's another one that has done well in the past. A trainer, Todd Pletcher, as I mentioned, Carpe Diem, materiality. Uh, possible for the Preakness, but I doubt it. I, I would think that he's going to wait for the Belmont for them. A competitive edge, he got a 102 buyer speed figure on the undercard at Churchill Downs, uh, winning the Pat Day Mile, and, and he's one that could end up uh, showing up in the Preakness Stakes uh, for trainer Todd Pletcher. So if he's going to run one, I think that that would be the horse that Pletcher is going to run. A uh, look for American Pharaoh, uh, Firing Line, and Dortmund. They could all come back. And, and it would be a battle if they ended up facing each other. Danzig Moon's another one that's possible. For American Pharaoh, uh, can he win the Triple Crown? I think he's got a much better chance than horses like Big Brown, uh, I'll Have Another, uh, and, and um, California Chrome. I didn't, after the Derby on my radio show, uh, Steve Bortstein asked if I thought that they could win the Triple Crown. Uh, right after the Derby, I said no, I didn't think any of those horses had a chance. I didn't say that this time. I think American Pharaoh is much better um, at least has a much better chance of winning the Triple Crown than they did. Uh, but the thing that's going to do them in, if anything else, is the, the depth of, 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 um, of, this, of this crop. A firing line in Dortmund, they're very good horses. Uh, we have horses like Frosted, uh, as we mentioned, a materiality. These are just good quality horses, and they could jump up and beat him. The, the biggest thing, I think, that's going to be his undoing, if, if he doesn't make it, uh, the Preakness is going to be his fourth race in nine weeks. He got a late start this year. And, and the fact that, that he's going to have to try to overcome that, uh, he's going to face fresher horses. A firing line was make the, six, the first start in six weeks for the Derby for him. Uh, and, and you have horses like uh, American Pharaoh, the fourth race in nine weeks for the Preakness. And then if he wins that, he's going to come back three weeks later. He's going to face fresh horses with a lot of ability, uh, like materiality and frosted. So, he, so he's got a lot of talent. He could do it. And, and he'll earn it if he, if he ends up getting it done. Uh, again. Preakness analysis we're going to be offering. Uh, we're going to offer Preakness only. We're going to have a full card uh, from Pimlico, and then we're going to also have our full card from Santa Anita. All that will be available at therunawayhorse.com. I'll go over there for details. Uh, that'll wrap up this video. We'll come back next week. We may have a better idea of the Preakness field. Until then, good luck at the races.